Welcome to Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. Send us some positive vibes, some love your way, especially if you need it out there today. Oh, today we're going to talk about Hydra Clan Boss, more specifically the top 40 Hydra Clan Boss champions inside this game. And newsflash, there's a lot of good ones. So if I snub your favorite, go ahead and let me know about it in the comments below. I was originally going to make this a top 10, then a top 20, then a top 30. And I'm like, man, there's so many good ones. Uh, anyway, guys, before we jump into the list, a quick word from today's video sponsor. I really do appreciate your patience and your support for the sponsor here on the channel but first a quick word from today's video sponsor it is watcher of realms and you're taking a look at the amazing new edith who is on a 15x summoning event this weekend look at her go man on horseback Boy, do I want Edith. That's right, I play this game every day. Well, not only do I play the game every day, but I covered the game every day as well. And Edith isn't the only 15X champion going on right now inside the game. Actually, this dude right here, the God Tier guy, Comet is on a 15 times event as well. And he is one of the most powerful mages, top three mage inside the entire game. Perfect time to go ahead and download and check out Watcher of Realms. So guys, as I get my clan boss battle in for the day, uh, I want to remind you guys watch your realm super fun game it's going to be intuitive to you guys coming from raid shadow legends but it's also unique and different enough that i love playing the two alongside honestly it's kind of got a tower defense vibe but you know upgrades and summoning and all that stuff it's going to be very intuitive to you guys coming from raid shadow legends a lot of my audience really enjoys both games again at the same time and the download link that i have for you guys today is good for pc it's going to be the recommended version it's going to take you right to the download client you go ahead and try it out it's all optimized for pc and the game even the screen has been refined it's a great experience that's exactly how i'm playing right now in the background so big shout out to watcher of realms for sponsoring today's video guys again the download link will be in the show notes below all right guys let's just jump into it here with my most wanted one of my most wanted champions in the game uh, gosh, Sophirian has to be A number one. This dude's a burner. He's an activator. He's got everything you need, and he's got revives as well. Oh, man, I wish I had this dude. Uh, he's got a, a turn meter fill, turn meter fill of all allies if the target's under a burn, which is an amazing A1. He's placing a burn, instantly activating the burn, then a shield on top of that, all on a three-turn cooldown. The burn lasts for three turns, which is helpful, and then he has the revive with the extra turn. Fills a turn meter of all allies by 5% for each HP, each HP burn place. Uh, that's insane. Like that turn meter fill just like it, it just constantly goes throughout the whole entire duration of the battle. Uh, whenever an HP burn is removed from an enemy, plays a decreased resistance on that enemy for one turn. Uh, insane stuff. Increases champion speed by 7 for each active HP burn debuff out there in the battle. HP in all battles by 33%. Yeah, I really want that dude. I really want that lizard all right next up guys is going to be none other than newt oh yeah he's got the, the best enemy max hp ability in the game we always say it you guys know it he's got the blessed bash man uh I, listen i still see a lot of top clans in or top uh players in my clan using newt heavily right that blessed bash just does a ton of damage enemy max hp triple hitter he also has an aoe the decreased attack we guys know newt right definitely belongs on the list let's talk about our first epic champion on the list guys i still think he belongs there i'm actually putting husk on the list over royal guard uh husk is used by a heck of a lot of really really high damage teams he's he's, he's a simple champion but he's so effective he's got the despair enemy max hp ability but then in addition to that he's got the provoke on the a1 he's a great secondary provoker for hydra clan boss and he's tanky he's got 20k base 21k base hp can do a lot of damage and just be a great bastion of your your team uh what i run husk in re in reflex gear and i shut off the a3 retaliate so i can just go from provokes back to the a2 and hopefully that a2 on a shorter cooldown number three or excuse me number four on the list let's go from epic all the way to mythical it's gizmak the terrible this dude is so cool man he's doing a lot right like a lot of these mythicals will be here all day if we read the entire kit let me focus on what makes him so amazing for hydra before the start of this champion's turn places an hp burn debuff on all enemies for two turns occurs once per round however at the start of this champion's turn he has another independent 50 percent chance of placing a burn on all enemies for one turn it cannot be resisted if this champion's crit rate is 
is 100% or higher, which we're going to make sure is the case because he places these burns and then he transfers to his alternate form and then, say it with me, Kaboom! <laughs> Attacks all enemies. Before attacking, plays a decreased defense on all enemies for two turns. Can't be resisted if they're under the burn we just placed. And then has an extra hit on enemies under burns. Extra turn if you kill an enemy. It's all on a three turn cooldown. It's a great ability. It's a lot of damage. He has pain link. He has taunt as well. This dude will be so good in the arena. His HP burn instant activation, I should mention. Uh, this dude like is doing so much. Got decreased speed, three turn cooldown. This guy would be so good in the arena, so nasty in the arena. If not for freaking polymorph, man. Like I don't know. That's another video for another day. But, but like he would be so cool, so good, so much fun. But it's just not possible right now. But hey, his base stats like most mythicals is really solid too. One fifteen base speed, super super fast. I love me some Gizmak the terrible. He's actually a lot better than I just outlined. But those are the highlights I would say on a champion who's got a lot going on on his kit. Let me talk about my personal favorite provoker for Hydra Clan boss in the game is none other than Molly Tankard. She is my go-to, my girl. I love Molly. I mean, not only is she one of the best provokers in the game, I would probably rank her like third for Hydra Clan boss out there, maybe fourth, whatever. Uh, she could have chance a 50% chance at a two-turn provoke. She got a, a big damage A1 with a burn, which is, or, uh, excuse me, decrease uh, damage increases if the target's under burn. But either way, it's a lot of damage, so you can build her for some crit rate if you want to. It's just the A1, but against decapitated heads, a lot of people don't realize if you don't build her for a little bit of damage, provide you can keep her alive, you can pop off for 500k against a decapitated head with this roast A1 ability. But either way, the highlights of her kit, other than the two-turn provoke potential, is the revive. She plays a dual role as my reviver, and as my provoker, and as my turn meter booster on my team, because Rowdy Crowd is nasty in Hydra Clan boss. It's on a one turn cooldown when booked, but you build her fast enough. Her base speed is really solid at 107. Fills a turn meter of all allies by 25% whenever she's hit by a boss. Oh, that's a constant churn of 25% turn meter fills for everybody on your team. Every turn, mostly, that she takes, it's really, really strong. All right, guys, let's talk about some burner and burn activators. I don't want to say, I can't say they're the best in the game, but they're in the conversation. And it's our attack. AoE on every ability, extending duration of burns, instantly activating burns, decrease attack, uh, a double hitter placing the burns. This guy's all about burns and about a heck of a lot of damage, and his passive helps amp up that damage or ramp up that damage or amp and ramp at the same time on the burning blood. You gotta love it. He's HP base. He can deal some damage. He's really cool. Now, with the triple AoEs, I love throwing this dude in a curse set as well. Have him be your hex supplier on top of everything else that he's bringing to the table if you don't already have a Michinaki Archer Queen or a Hex Provider Mithrala on your squad. All right, man, Alt or Supreme, not Ultimate Galek Ash, Supreme Galek. There he is in all his glory, man. Supreme Galek is so nasty in Hydra Clan Boss. He's got a two time hitter. Each hit has an increasing duration of burns. Not a bad A1. He's got a four time at random. I usually hate at random abilities, but he's placing an increased attack on himself for three turns on a three turn cooldown, which is great. He's filling his turn meter by 30% if there's more than uh, uh, enemies under burn. And he has the instant activation of HP burn burns on the target uh, while decreasing those durations on the A2. A lot going on here in the Bloodshed Tempest. On the A3, it gets even better. It's an AoE on a three-turn cooldown. He's got a ten, an extra 10% chance of inflicting a critical hit, and then 100% burn and block buffs. Ah, burn does a lot of damage. Newsflash and block buffs is one of the essential debuffs that we look for in Hydra Clan Boss. He's also got a decreased speed on targets whose turn meter is higher than 50%. Oh, it's the proverbial cherry on top. Decreased speed, HP burn, and block buffs on a three-turn cooldown. Yes, please. And then it keeps going on his passive. Whenever this champion receives a fear, true fear, we can just stop there for Hydra purposes, instantly removes it, and then fully heals him and then gives them an extra turn. Dude, Supreme Galek, man. 
This dude's the best Supreme in the game, at least for Hydra Clan boss, arguably overall. Next on the list, guys, actually Angar. You got to be kidding me. That's right, Angar. The, the, the Void Legendary, who I gave so much grief to for so long, makes our list after his big buff. Listen, guys, if you're looking for a Provoker, look no further, right? He can deal some nice damage. He has counterattack in his own kit. He's got an extra hit on the A1 if they're under a Provoke. But he has, again, the chance of a two-turn Provoke. It is a 75% chance of placing a two-turn provoke on a three-turn cooldown on the AoE. Obviously not necessary to have the AoE, but it's good for damage as well. He deals a decent amount of damage as well. After his buff, he's just a heck of a lot better, you know, with that two-turn provoke. He's a little bit niche, damage dealing and just lockdown, you know, provoking. Uh, but I still think he belongs in the conversation because I truly think he's a top a five Hydra clan boss provoker right now in the game. Maybe even top three along with Molly, and I guess we might as well talk about her right now. Probably the most obvious choice on this entire list. Hard to argue that. It is the Archer Queen. What doesn't this freaking champion do, guys? AoE stun, well, that's not going to help us, but the good news is if it's a boss, she places the decrease speed. I love it. Uh, she's got the decrease speed. A turn meter fill of the decrease speed is placed by this skill. Fantastic. She's got a two-turn provoke and a hex on a three-turn cooldown. Oh, my God. I should just stop this video right now because of how freaking disgustingly good. She's so hard to get. She's an exclusive champion. But that doesn't change how good she is. She's one of the best in the entire game, if not the best overall clan, Hydra clan boss champion inside the entire game. All right, next up, let's talk about another enemy max HP champion. It is Acrisia. Acrisia has an enemy max HP on every single ability. What else do you want me to say about Acrisia, guys? She is the best damage dealer for a higher level, the highest level nightmare difficulty for Hydra clan boss. Just endless enemy max HP. She got the AoE times two enemy max HP, and she's fairly easy to keep alive as well. So I absolutely love Acrisia. Definitely a champion that I would love to have two of on my account. But hey, I'm sure some of you are watching and like, dude, Ash, I just want one. Speaking of a champion that I don't have one of, but I would love to, it's Feral the Barkhorn. This dude is a monster, guys. He is a monster. I'm really jealous of any of you guys who have this guy so he's got a decrease speed on his A1, on his A2, an AoE decrease accuracy and block bust for two turns. He's got a increased resistance for three turns on a four turn cooldown and a perfect veil on top of that. Uh, but his passive is what makes him truly insane for Hydra Clan boss. If an ally is under two or more buffs, increase their resistance. Three or more, increase their accuracy. Four or more also increases their damage dealt by 20%. Four buffs is not a large threshold to reach nowadays especially in hydra clan boss it seems like every uh team is just kind of almost just by design built in with four or five buffs at the minimum on all of your allies you get a buff extender they'll never drop off hopefully and then you'll benefit from the resistance the accuracy and the more damage oh this guy's nasty i really wish i had this dude uh for sure grand oak we're right here might as well talk about him right grand oak is a beast i just made an entire video on grand oak podrick he is so so good guys why well he's got a decreased random cooldown good in the arena not necessarily good for hydra clan boss but his spores abilities weird spores he comes in with an ally attack it's all allies that's not one two three or four but five allies joining in on that attack all ally ally attacks are so good in hydra clan boss because we're benefiting from six champions all attacking using their a1s and a1s in this game are getting more and more powerful he also has a turn meter fill in a cleanse and an increased speed and all the buffs that we need whenever we need them on whoever needs them right the increased attack increased defense increased accuracy and a shield at the beginning of each of his turn on whoever needs you know on attack based champions yada 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 he is the man dude i made a whole video talking about how i actually end up using him not to say that he's better than all of my mythicals that i pulled on my big primal shard opening but i end up using grand oak more than them you know that goes to show you how good he is not necessarily how bad certainly any of the other ones are right uh or the mythicals are 
Elva Autumnborn uh, definitely de deserves a spot on the list. She's got a great healer on her passive. She's got a revive on a short three-turn cooldown. She's got a cleanse, a block damage, and an increased speed. She's doing so much. She's got a continuous heal on her A1 as well. An incredibly good healer. And an, an amazing cleanser, plus the increased speed block debuffs. Uh, the full kit, right? From a reviver, healer, and support. All in one on your team. I really love Elva in basically anywhere in the game. She's one of those champions uh, that you can really truly use pretty much pretty much anywhere, right? Let's go ahead and talk about another mythical here, guys. Let's talk about Alaz. Alaz, the sun bearer. You know, I was kind of down on Alaz, but I was using him incorrectly when I initially built him. I should say, maybe you Using him incorrectly is a bit of an overstatement, but essentially what I was doing with him is I was switching forms, all right? And I was very underwhelmed by his second form here. Uh, this solar flare wasn't doing that much damage. Uh, he does have the burn, right? And the uh, the acti instant activation, however, they have to be under stone skin, so he's, that's not going to help us. Neither is a true fear, so a little bit of, okay, uh, you know, a not, a, not a crazy nuke. The HP burn, but no activation. So what am I doing with this dude? Uh, he also has a good strength and increased resistance on a four turn cooldown. You know, it's not bad, but I should never have been switching forms. All you need is the base on Allah's the Sun Bearer. And well, I didn't know that and I played it incorrectly. Basically, this Rolling Thunder is an incredibly hard hitting nuke. Uh, you can get an extra hit on targets less than 50% HP after the first hit. He's also bringing the increased defense on all allies, uh, which benefits him because he's a defense based champion. And then he has the counter attack and the provoke two turn single target, which is all you need in Hydra Clan Boss. So yeah, a damage dealer, Counterattack on everybody. Uh, Alaz the Sun Bearer is a monster. All right, let's talk about another mythical. Let's 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 match it with a uh, with an epic. Good old not Rugnor. <laughs> I almost clicked on the wrong dude there. Good old Geo. I thought about it because Geo's used less than he was when Hydra Clan Boss initially came out. But I thought to myself, you know what? There's still millions of players out there who rely on Geo incredibly heavily in Hydra Clan Boss. Oh, I'm stressed. <laughs> I mentioned it on my last video too, but you can throw him in a curse set too with the AOE on Tremor Staff on his A1 ability. Decreased accuracy is definitely useful uh, in basically all areas of the game. Nice to have on the AOE on the A1, albeit a 40% land rate. Uh, but really this quicksand grasp, it still does just a ton of damage, right? Uh, but what about you guys? Would you have Geomancer on your top 40 Hydra Clan boss list? Because I thought long and hard about this one. I was like, wait, is he still on it? Is he not on it? But I ended up still putting him on the list because he's just such a competent damage dealer. You can remove buffs if you need to. You can steal him if they're under HP burn. He can give you a lot of utility. Again, I do like considering him in a curse set or a reflex set as well uh, for obvious reasons on both. All right, let's keep it going here. Another mythical, man. It's the, it's the era of mythicals. What do you want me to do, guys? I have nothing. I have, no, uh, I have no defense here, but the truth is there's a lot of good mythicals in the game. And I do not have uh, Androk but even with his nerf, I still think he belongs on the list. I mean, heck, I'm seeing screenshot after screenshot, record after record using this dude. It's pretty insane. He has a decreased defense on, uh, excuse me, increased defense on all allies for one turn. This is his A1, right? He's getting AOE increased duration of all ally buffs. So important, especially with a lot of teams running their champions in relentless sets. Getting that extra turn can strip away your buffs. So having a buff extender is always a good idea especially if you do have relentless sets on your team right help mitigate those turns lost he also has increased resistance strength and continuous heals uh and additional continuous heals if they have less than 50 percent hp he's a great champion on his base and then he still has the aoe decreased resistance weaken and feeble of course enfeeble nerf is still coming but i still think this guy is going to be an absolute beast he's removing boss from all enemies deals pure damage on roar and he can deal a lot of damage as well i've seen some insane and rock the glorious uh dps builds as well so i think he'll still be on the list guys we can stay here uh Taurus and Marichka. I almost want to make this one a tie, right? Because I think they're quite a bit better together, if you have them, obviously. That's brutal. But even when they're alone, Taurus still makes the list, and honestly, Marichka could make the list as well, right? Uh, the thing about Marichka is, is this is not a knock on her. She's incredible. She's one of the best supports in the game, one of the best healers in the entire game. She has a cleanse on top of that. I mean, you guys know Marichka. She's very, very good. Uh, but sometimes in the teams that I have, 
when I'm not running Taurus with her, it's like I really need a reviver in that spot, at least in, in on my account, on my team. So I decided to give the nod to Taurus the Fierce. Again, let's just call it a tie, right? I mean, what, what do we care, right? Taurus, man. He just deals a lot of damage. <laughs> what else do you want me to say? Constant pressure is still one of the biggest nukes. And because we are in the buff meta, we talked about this with Fero, right? Uh, there's a lot of buffs going around. Constant pressure is going to do a heck of a lot of damage. He's one of the best DPSs out there for Hydra Clan boss, especially as, well, I was going to say as you get up in difficulty, but really any difficulty, he's going to get the job done, guys. Um, speaking of a guy that you may not have expected to be on this list today, it's actually Turvold. So I mentioned earlier in the video, we're going to have another single target nuker on the list. And I was referring to Turvold, right? Uh, kind of like Taurus, he deals more damage when he has more buffs on him. He brings three of his own buffs. But man, this Juggernaut, even with Hex, the 10% Hex, he can deal some absolutely absurd damage uh, to Hydra Clan Boss, especially as a single target nuker. He can out damage most AoE nukers out there in the game. So Turvold definitely deserves to be on the list in my opinion. All right, I wanna talk about my favorite debuffer, guys. She's not used quite as much after the Angar buff, after Archer Queen was added to the game, et cetera, et cetera, but Contra the Cyclone, I still put her as maybe five or six on my provokers out there in the game. If you think I'm crazy, well, listen up. She's got an AoE times three hitter on a three turn cooldown where she places so many essential debuffs. Decrease speed, decrease attack, block buffs, weaken, heal reduction, okay. Decrease accuracy, man. Oh, she's bringing so much to the table on each of these hits, right? And then on her passive, 75% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn on enemies under five or more debuffs at the start of this champion's turn. Come on. That is such a great ability. Great provoke on a no, no cooldown or anything like that on her passive. And then she can place her debuffs on weak hits. That is such an overlooked part of her kit. I'm telling you right now, Contra can deal some damage, some nice damage. You put her in reflex set. You can get back to this ability in two turns, essentially, right? Or, yeah, two turns. <laughs> that's that's what it is, Ash. If it procs and you're landing so many debuffs, so much going on with this passive. Great provoke. She's super tanky. I love Contra the Cyclone. I still consider her one of the better provokers in the game and debuffers, uh, just generally speaking. Uh, let's go to the probably Captain Obvious choice of this video. It's Trunda. What do I need to say about Trunda? Every world record team uh, includes Trunda, right, for damage and Hydra Clan Boss. Her Cloak of Ages, it's just absolutely absurdly broken. They've came out, Plarium that is, and said that they have no intentions of nerfing her in any regard. I don't like when people are what do you call it? Happy? I don't know how I feel about it, man. I guess I'm cool about it. I would never want a champion nerf, right? I mean, I think they should it should buff more, nerf less as a general rule of thumb. But it is staggering to see how much she out damages, uh, especially on lower difficulties. It, with Hydra uh, uh, Clash going on in the game as well, uh, with her A2. Yeah, her Forge Rhythm hits hard as well. But really, it's all about the Cloak of Ages. Just you're talking about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million damage in one swing. It is just it's crazy it's crazy and she's very very good newsflash you heard it here first trunda is good and hydra clan boss so next up probably my second favorite damage dealer on the list guys it's garo blood mall oh she's insane you can use you can bounce back and forth between her base and her alternate form if you want to she does have a provoke it's on a four turn cooldown unkillable for three turns uh to me a four turn provoke is not worth changing forms when you consider how much damage she does with her alternate form so i just keep her on alternate on my account she, uh, Calamitous Maul deals just an insane amount of damage. And then Magma Slam does a lot of damage on an AoE on the A1. But then you have a 20% chance of repeating the attack. And she has a 25% chance of joining in on everybody else's attack with her AoE on the A1. She is an absolute absurd damage dealer. Uh, you can even see her as a damage dealer in the arena. Basically anywhere. Campaign Farmer. You name it. She's got it. Geralt is insanity persona personified here inside the game i absolutely love that champion i'm still including harima on the list guys uh 
she is still such a tank, right? Such a damage dealer. I still love her in the arena, obviously. Uh, Purgative Punishment can deal, you know, a million damage a pop, depending on difficulty and gear and, and all the, you know, everything you guys already know about. But you slap an increased defense champion on the team along with Harima, just making sure she's dealing maximum damage on all of her abilities. She can be an insanely good DPS and a provoker on top of that on a three-turn cooldown with Celestial Awe. So for me, because of the damage plus the provoke plus the tankiness as well she's still on my list for good reason mishinaki did you miss me oh man mishinaki is one of my faves guys you know that i talk about this dude all the time he's a tank too he's defense based he's coming at you with the hex the decreased defense the decreased attack removing buffs as well hex on the a3 not the a2 he has Everything you need for Hydra Clan Boss. He has a lot of damage. He has a burn on his A1. He's joining in on random attacks, right? Against enemies with Hex. He's removing buffs. He's, I mean, what isn't this dude doing that you need in Hydra Clan Boss, right? The Hex as well? I mean, he's so sick. Odds are, if you have him, you, you know, you're using that. I, I pulled two. I was so lucky to pull two Michinakis, and he's one of those rare champions out there that I'm never empowering, at least till I get three, because he can be used on all three of your teams. He's he's exceptionally good. Very, very, very fun champion to mess around with uh, everywhere in the game, really, but especially Hydra Clan Boss. Lady Makage! Oh, Lady Makage is nasty. She's one of my favorite champions in the game. She's a perfect permanent mythical fusion in the game as well i mean oh she does so much at the start of this turn she removes all the buffs from the ally with the highest attack how about that right just keeping your attacker free of cc and everything else and hydra clan boss on the will of makage that's just like the, the least important part of her kit but just showing you how much utility she has everywhere right she has increased duration of all ally buffs decreased duration of all enemy buffs and ally debuffs this this uh silken snare the a2 so good so good a little cleanse a little increase decrease oh she got the ally attack with all allies increase attack increase crit damage where you talked about that with grand oak in terms of the uh the power of having an all ally all six of them attacking in hydra clan boss so good uh Hey, if you need it, you can have the increased accuracy and the removing all buffs with the AoE weaken on her base form as well. Uh, very, very good. Lady Makage is one, also one of my favorite arena champions right now. I've been, I built her with my best speed gear and I've been using her uh, a lot, a lot. Let's go to the Lizard Man, guys. Nekmo Thar. Ooh, Nekmo is very uh, good as well. He's got an AoE on the A1, decrease attack, AoE on the A2, decrease speed and leech. Decreased speed and leech, especially decreased speed, but both of them are so great to have for Hydra Clan boss. Leech is going to make sure everybody's topped off, especially your DPS, which are usually your squishier units. They're going to be healing themselves vis-a-vis -vis basically a built-in lifesteal throughout the duration of the match. So good, right? But decreased speed. I mean, 30% decreased speed is allows your damage dealers more time to do damage. It allows uh, your healers more time to heal and revive in between attacks. It's so so good to me it's a fundamental debuff that i'm gonna have on all of my hydra clan boss teams he's also a little motor right his his own turn meter is going up all the time and he has an increased speed with an extra turn turn meter fill oh this guy is a nasty little bug in nekmothar i have one nekmothar on my account if i had two He's another one of those champions that I would just uh, build two of for two Hydra Clan boss teams. Uh, Sacred Order time, guys, is a few of these Sacred Order champions, but Cupidus and Venus definitely make the list, especially when they're together, right? A hard-hitting AoE on the A2. They actually gave him a buff. Now it's 100% HP burn and a four-turn cooldown. He has the AoE on the A1 as well. Damage increased by 15% if the target has any debuffs, which is usually the case in Hydra Clan Boss. He brings his own increased attack, which is really nice. He has a burn as well on all enemies for two turns. If you kill an enemy, can't be resisted. Okay, not super relevant for Hydra, but still, he does have the AoE burn on 100% on his A2 ability when booked. And then when he's with Venus, not only is he dealing more damage, but he counterattacks every time he's hit with the Heartbreaker A1. I'm not sure if he'd be on the list 
he'd be probably right outside the top 40, right? If you didn't have Venus on the same team. Come on, you're ruining my moment here. But if you have both of these champions, not many do, but if you do, oh, they're definitely both on the list, right? AoE decrease defense and weaken on three turn cooldown and AoE burn on the four turn cooldown from Venus. But if you have Cupidus on the same team, she also removes all buffs from all enemies and has a chance of granting an extra turn, which is extremely valuable. It reduces the cooldown of the A2 and the A3, not to mention you, all, you get the extra turn on top of everything else. And she's so tanky and so fast. Venus is built different, man. She really is. Super fat, 112 base speed, 22, 23k HP. She is... She's the woman. Venus and Cupidus, uh, I love them. I use both of them together on one of my main teams. Let's talk about an epic here, guys. And that is Ugo. She's still on the list, man. Talk about a champion that does a bunch of things that you need all in one kit. She's got a leech, right? She's got to block buffs. Again, we keep talking about how important hex, block buffs, decrease speed. Three of my favorite debuffs to have on your Hydra Clan boss teams. And she brings uh, decreased defense all on a three-turn cooldown. She has a little mini cleanse and a heal as well. Incredibly competent healer. Uh, all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. So stack a bunch of HP and a bunch of accuracy on her. And you've got a really good lockdown support and debuffer ugo definitely belongs still on the list heck guys we're rolling right now we are rolling i want to talk about maybe the last maybe the last epic on the list let's do one quick void legendary in the meantime right let's talk about grazer iron gut oh the big fella i love this dude man i wanted this guy so badly and let me tell you when i pulled him he definitely uh i would say he exceeded my expectations just so much daily uh damage from the healing bombardment uh we're healing himself and increase the duration of all buffs on all allies and it's an enemy max hp ability on a three turn cooldown he also has an aoe with a shield on the a1 uh and he has the provoke not to mention the increased uh, resistance and increased defense. All on a three-turn cooldown has a passive heal as well. And an unkillable, man. What doesn't the big fella do here? He's, uh, he's awesome. He actually replaced Krisk in my teams. Why? They're easily to compare these two big, you know, uh, void legendaries. They have kind of not the same character model, but they're big and they have a somewhat similar kit, right? They have the AOE on the A1. Uh, they both provoke, yada, yada, yada. I'm not saying that Krisk is any worse or better than Grazer Iron Gut, but Grazer does have that enemy max HP ability, which is extremely valuable. But what they bring to the table is a bit unique. We have the decreased speed on Krisk. We have the increased duration of all buffs, which again, Grazer also has. We have the allied protection. We have the heals on himself, the continuous heals. And then we have the provoke and increased speed, increased defense on himself. We have the debuffs on the passive. So Chris just does so much. It's hard to it's it, it's hard to even in, in, encapsulate everything that this one champion adds to your team when he's on it. He's an old school void legendary, and man, I almost want to see a buff to this speed. 94 is so slow, but it doesn't matter. He's still that good. He's still so good that even with a 94 speed, it doesn't matter. He's he's so. He's so essential to so many teams out there. He fits so many needs. You can build him for damage. I personally built him for, you know, as much damage I can get out of him. I put him in a curse set as well if you don't already have a hex. So a lot of different ways you can build these champions, especially ones with AoEs like all over the place like Chris, right? Inquisitor Shamil. I felt like he needed to be on the list, guys, uh, because he does, again, so... Oh, he doesn't do so much, I guess. I take that back. He does something that nobody else in the game does. And that is the instant cleanse of fears and true fears. It's one of the most essential and annoying things about Hydra clan boss, isn't it, guys? And Inquisitor Shamil, he's got you covered. So we can deal a lot of damage, and he can just totally mitigate all the true fears the entire battle. So for that reason, I, ha I felt like I had to still include him on the list, even though, to be fair, he's not used as much as he once was on Hydra clan boss teams. But I, I, heck, I'm pretty confident in saying He's probably still used on quite a bit of Hydra clan boss teams, and for good reason. Let's talk about the freebies here, guys. I want to give a massive honorable mention. I couldn't put her on a list, but she's on my personal list, Tremaria. An AoE, an AoE, and a cleanse. I love Tremari. You guys know how much I do. I talk about her all the time, uh, but she didn't make the top, top 40, but I, I wanted to put her in there. Lydia did. 
Uh, Lydia is an interesting one because I'm not sure how many of you guys would agree or disagree with me on this. But we already talked about this. It's hard to find a champion that has decreased defense and a, a weakened big version on a three-turn cooldown. Not a lot of players have access to a Venus, right? And she's better than Dracomorph for sure. So she's also bringing the strength in and the increased speed. Forget the rest of her kit for a moment. Just her base stats and this one ability, it's doing so much. It's doing so much on a three-turn cooldown that I still just had to put her on the list. I think Lydia still got it. What about you guys? Let me know how you feel about Lydia. Uh, Mithrala time, guys. Might as well cover them both. Mithrala is the champion that you get eventually from collecting enough fragments in Hydra Clan boss, and uh, she's exceptionally good as well. She got the cleanse. She got the shield. She got the big version of Strengthen. And then she has the big version of increased defense, big version of increased attack, so she can set up your attack-based nukers, your defense-based nukers, and do a heck of a good job at keeping everybody alive in the meantime. She also applies Hex. And of course, Hex for Hydra. You need to have a Hex on all of your teams, guys. And if you don't, you need to consider or start farming Ice Golem to get your hands on some curse sets uh, because it's such an essential debuff. It will just give you so much more overall damage. She also brings a little bit of poison on the A1. So I still include both of those, Lydia and Mithrala, as top 40 champions. What about you guys? Let me know specifically on those two if you still consider them top Hydra Clan Boss champions. Uh, Cardial. This is completing the trifecta of all ally, ally attackers out there. Actually, there's a couple that I didn't mention on the video, and they could easily be uh, included as well. Uh, but cardio, increased crit rate, increased crit damage, the full ally attack, everybody included, four turn cooldown with the cleanse, with the block debuffs, with the revive on death, right? Uh, and the heal on the A1. He does so much on one champion. Uh, he's so good. He has speed and all bows. You could use him as an aura lead on top of everything else. Uh, I really, really love Cardio. Uh, however, I personally do go with Lady Makage over Cardio on my teams. Not to say he's necessarily any better or worse, but I feel like. Lady Makage is, maybe I am saying she is better. <laughs> it depends on what you need though, right? But for Hydra on my team, I like Lady Makage, especially that A2, it's so nasty. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, a champion that I hear less and less folks talking about, but I still think she's one of the better ones out there in the game. That's Lady Kimmy. She's 115 base speed. You guys already know that, but boy, she is fast. Uh, I think she's... One of the fastest champions inside the entire game, right? She has an AoE, decreased accuracy, decreased speed on a three-turn cooldown. Uh, I love both of those debuffs, especially on a three-turn cooldown. And then she has a turn meter fill, an increased speed, an increased accuracy, removing a random buff from each enemy, and a block bust for two turns on the Spirit Flux ability. You can build her super fast. She has turn meter fill built into the Imperious passive as well. I think she's just one of those champions. I've said this about her before, and I, I, I think a few of you guys have agreed with me in the comments like yeah i feel the same way about her ash but that is you put her on a hydra clan boss team like kind of a value over replacement type deal right and you just walk away feeling like the team is better you just get more damage right because she does so much packed into one super speedy really cool champion tawana rock oh gosh I feel like I have snubbed her just by not mentioning her early in the video. This is not like a ranking in order video, but man, Tuana Rock is so good. She's got block buffs and she can spread said block buffs everywhere, right? Not to mention the decreased attack while we're at it. She has an increased speed and increased defense on a three turn cooldown. She has a decreased speed on her A1. She has a continuous heal. Uh, did I say a decreased speed? Increased speed. Decreased speed on the A1. Slow it down, Ash. Slow it down. We have a decreased speed on the A1 with a continuous heal and a continuous heal on the ally with lowest HP. Those continuous heals off of her A1, it really does add up. And then she has the cleanse on the invulnerable uh, passive. Invo invulnerable. Invoilable, obviously. Come on, who doesn't know invoilable? Obviously, I use that word every day. The thing about her is, is she she can remove two debuffs. Obviously, if they're under the continuous heals, which she also brings on her A1 ability, you put her in a relentless set. She's gotta be in relentless. This is a champion you absolutely want taking extra turns and start doing more cleansing vis-a-vis uh, -vis this passive when she gets those extra turns. Moreover, coming quicker back to the A3 and the A2 to make sure that we keep the block buffs and the the uh, essential buffs up there as long as possible. 
incredible. Tawana Rock is so good. Another, we mentioned this about a few champions already, but another champion that I'm absolutely building multiple of rather than empowering. This one might surprise some of you guys, but Arbiter makes the list. I love Arbiter for Hydra Clan boss. Uh, she's super fast, right? You probably have her in speed gear anyway. And she is such a motor champion, right? She got the increased attack for your team. She got the revive for your team. And she has this really unique ability to have two big speed turn meter boosts for your team, right? She has a 30% turn meter boost on the A3 and then the 20% turn meter boost on the A4, which you can use even if you're not reviving anybody. So if the name of your game is applying a decreased speed to the Hydra clan boss heads and then boosting your team to get as many turns in as possible before the Hydras take their turns, look no further. You've also got decreased duration of enemy buffs, which is incredibly helpful on the A2 ability. And you have a heal. 25% uh, of their max HP if they have less than 50% HP. She deals like, or gives, I should say, 2 million plus in heals to the team that I use her on. That's a lot of healing, and it comes from, again, her A3 ability. I love me some Arbiter, guys. Uh, okay. We have four left on the list. We have one mythical on the list. Uh, Crixia, Night Queen Crixia. Uh, I just love, I love Crixia. I'm a little bit biased, but she has decreased resistance, block buffs, which is very nice, right? So I usually use this ability, Doom Lantern, on the, uh, on the base form. And then I'm switching forms. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm switching forms. There we go. And she's going to have the cleanse and the reset of all uh, skills by three turns on the Night Purge ability, right? So this is incredibly good. I love that she's cleansing and resetting the cooldowns in the same ability, right? Because so many times we need that cleanse. This is why she's my favorite kind of uh, reset champion out there. By the way, on her base form, she does have a remove all buffs ability in case of an emergency where buffs start to stack up on the Hydra heads. You can get, get rid of those as well as, again, the block buffs to make sure they don't come back, right? And then on the A2 on her alternate form, we have a block debuffs and an increased resistance and a turn meter fill on a three turn cooldown so she does so much uh great activator of some of the awesome champions that we talked about on this list like a trunda for example right with a night purge ability so uh yeah i mean night queen is absolutely insane white king narcissus that's right i'm sure nobody thought this dude would be on the list but he actually is uh Try him out if you don't believe me. I ran him in my arena build, right? Along with White Queen, right? And uh, he just did insane amount of damage with this Desecration Blast, his A2 ability, just like he does in the arena, right? But he did it for Hydra Clan Boss too. He's quickly becoming one of my favorite DPS options basically anywhere in the game. He is so freaking good. All right, guys, just a couple more on the list. Uh, this guy is brand new brand new at the time of this recording but let me tell you he is nasty so new that i forgot what uh faction he's in <laughs> it's the wall master authorian this guy looks awesome doesn't he uh this guy i've seen it i don't have him to be clear but i've seen him and he's he's next level dps attacks all enemies will not trigger counter attacks fills his champions turn by five percent for each living enemy after the attack does nice damage on the a1 on the a2 an aoe times two on a three turn cooldown first hit block buffs second hit decrease attack fills his champions turn by five percent for each living enemy after the attack so more turn meter fill and it's an enemy max hp ability oh we have an increased attack increased accuracy increased speed extra turn ability as well Ooh, he is He's uh, he's next level damage. I want this dude so much. Wall Master increases uh, champion's max HP by 20% for each enemy killed. And it does include uh, uh, decapitated uh, Hydra bosses as well. Man, this dude was built to be a Hydra nuker extraordinaire. This five out of five in Hydra rating is extremely well deserved so last but not least guys it's really it's funny because i'm looking here at like three or four fina loranophil tatura star sage the answer is star sage he does so much he revives he perfect veils he uh cleanses he removes all buffs from all enemies he does 
everything. I mean, what? I mean, he has AoEs on his A1. I mean, he's next level. He's a five out of five pretty much everywhere in the game, right? In my opinion. Uh, but I guess honorable mention to Fina. Oh, I'm starting to build some really cool Fina teams, guys. And I have a whole video out on her already. So check that out right now because this video is over. Uh, but yeah, Fina and Loranathil are both amazing as well. And I suspect there'll be some elite teams built around Fina in the future. Guys, let me know who I snubbed in the comments below. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.